What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the Madden 24 St. Louis Sentinels franchise. That is right, welcome back. Game one of the season didn't quite go as planned, but that's okay. I got a good feeling that we can rebound today and bring the heat to the Philadelphia Eagles. Boom, boom, boom. If you guys are fired up for uh, season number three, game two here in St. Louis Sentinels franchise, please like the video and consider subscribing for weekly Madden 24 content. And it looks like we weren't the only team who suffered defeat last week in the NFC East. Cowboys being the only team that got the dub in week one. Giants, us, and the Eagles, whom we play today, all dropped their first games and I'm very curious to know if the NFC East is going to be as competitive as it has been in previous seasons. Seems like every season in this franchise, the NFC East is all jumbled up here. And we take on the Eagles today, who we historically have played very well against. The Eagles, of course, are stacked full of weapons. But for some reason, it seems like we always play well against them now. They do got Austin Eckler, who has been a problem for us in the past. I think that... We'll start off defending the deep pass here against Jalen Hurts. Make sure my guys are still on half pads because I do not want the injury bug here. And doesn't look like their defense is really too good at anything. I'm going to go throw it deep because J.J. Ford did have kind of a rough week at the office last week in his first game of the season and got to figure that he's got to bounce back. So we're going to make get two plus passing touchdowns. Our goal for this week as well. Rookie Glenn May out of Washington. He was the talk of last week as he had two tackles and two sacks. Uh, Glenn May, I didn't expect him to really do too much seeing as how he's only normal dev, not super high overall, but for some reason he just seemed to start off his NFL campaign wonderfully. And he was able to get to Justin Herbert two times in the backfield. And there was other times, too, where I feel like he was close and we didn't get, you know, necessarily the sack. But he played very great. And Glenn May being six foot three, 355 pounds. He is a big body there on that defensive line. Getting kind of tripped up by the little things there. Got to make sure we get that multiplier and hoping for a good possible dev up trait. For Glenn May today do get gold as always this is one of the easier drills in Madden trench battle and trench battle the long haul let's see if Glenn May does get a dev trait upgrade I know it's very rare but has happened a couple times and he will not but that's okay if Glenn May plays any way like he did last week his future here in the Sentinels could be bright. It does make me happy to know that there were three other teams that allowed 40 plus points last week. Of course we did, but also the Packers did, the Broncos and the Eagles, who we play today, allowed almost 50. So I know that doesn't mean anything when, they, when a team plays us, because I feel like when a team plays us, all bets are off. But as of right now in week two, we're playing the worst defensive team in the NFL. Didn't do too much scouting because we're only in week two, but I did take a look at some of the defensive ends. I mentioned we got to get better. We got to have somebody rushing alongside Chase Young. Right now we have Dante Fowler, and there does look to be some, at least with only 20% scouted, some pretty good prospects at defensive end. We got Antoine Springs, who's projected to go top five out of South Carolina. Again, don't know really anything about these guys yet, but we do know he is a phenomenal athlete. That much is for sure. And he's not going to get injured a lot, which I always, always love to see. We also got Trevor Spidell, uh, left end here out of Utah. We know he has a tackling. He too is also a very good athlete, which I love to see. And B play rec and A tackle. Pretty good start for my man. And then the white boy, Greg Weston. <laughs> right in out of Alabama he also looks good too another all three of these defensive ends are very very good athletes he's probably going to be a speed rusher because we know that he has a finesse moves I'll look at the you know more draft prospects later on in the season but I did want to highlight some of these defensive ends because that will probably be at least for now what I target in the first round of the next draft so far, these three look pretty good. Couple upgrades to take care of here before we travel down to the link to take on our NFC East rival, Philadelphia Eagles. And it is our number one draft pick, Tony Hoover. I am actually gonna go slot this time because I feel like you do get better upgrades in slot. He's already a scheme fit at man to man. He does get the plus two man coverage. He had a chance last week to get a nice pick 
and just completely mistimed it. I think Tony Hoover, the vacuum cleaner, is what I'm going to dub him. Uh, of course, Hoover being a vacuum. You guys get it. You guys get where I'm coming from. I expect great things from him, but today, right now, the order of business is to get in the win column for the first time this season. And if you guys are fired up for more St. Louis Sentinels content, please like the video, consider subscribing because I do drop Madden 24 content that you should enjoy each and every week, most weeks, multiple times a week. So without further ado, guys, let's get down to Lincoln Financial Field and get ready for the game. Tressway set to boot this thing off deep and we are underway. Very, very thirsty for a victory. Starting the season off 0-1, I mean, does not mean anything at all, but when you start the season off 0-2, and you were one game away from making the Super Bowl the previous season, questions start to get asked. So here's Jalen Hurts, three touchdowns to one pick last week, 243 yards. J.J. Ford had kind of a similar stat line. I think he had two touchdowns and also definitely had one pick, but he didn't really do too much through the air. So uh, we'll see what Jalen Hurts here does on the opening play of the game. It's going to be a quick little RPO there to A.J. Brown. And a good one at that, netting 11 yards. Eagles are stacked full of weapons. This much we know to be true. They got A.J. Brown. They got Devontae Smith. They got Dallas Goddard. So it's never an easy task when you play Philly. But we do, again, historically, play pretty good. Jamin Davis almost got to Jalen Hurts. Was so close there on the little wraparound blitz. He was able to find Devin Duvernay, though, and avoid disaster. Well, man, up here, play a little man defense. Hurts coming out single back. Need Jonathan Allen. This is going to be a run, one would think. Jonathan Allen needs to get in the backfield, and he does. But Austin Eckler pushes the pile forward for five. So Eckler always shifty back there in the backfield, always pretty hard to bring down. He does a good job combining uh, speed and power. I feel like, and that time he was able to move the chain. So fresh set of downs for Hurts, sending a man in motion. So this is again, probably gonna be a run. And this time, I think that was James Smith Williams. It was big number 96 was it there to meet Eckler for a loss of one. I'm guessing pass on this one because I just feel like it's definitely gonna be a pass now that the Eagles are behind the sticks. We'll see if that holds true. Gotta cover the tight end out here. Hurts is gonna run with it and slide. Hurts always. A weapon on the ground as we know in real life and here in Madden had all the routes covered up pretty good there but the one player that we didn't account for was the QB so got to make sure we do that for the future here ball is on the 40 into Sentinels territory Devin Duvernay gonna get it but Justin Hayward the rookie out of Miami was there to meet him play a little damage control only for a minimal gain of four looking for Hayward to take that kind of Next big step this this season, he did get upgraded to star dev last season, which was nice and nice defense there by Fuller. Uh, Jamin Davis was also in the vicinity as well. So this time going to have a little spy on the field here. Got to make sure that Hertz doesn't roll out and kill us with his legs as he has been known to do from time to time. And that was almost picked by Kendall Fuller, who did have one of those last week. It was a big one, too. It was a house call. If you guys remember a pick six, and this is going to be a long field goal for Kaimi Fairbairn, who has now found his way over to Philly, kicking it from close to the logo. We'll see if he drills it, and that one is right down the middle. Eagles going to strike first, but a field goal, much better than a touchdown, obviously. Simple math would tell you that. Here is J.J. Ford, the two-year man now, out of Fresno State. Had, I mean, that by J.J. Ford standards, Last week was terrible. I mean, rarely does he finish a game in uh, the low 200s, and that is exactly what he did last week. So definitely got to hope to rebound in this one. Philadelphia's e uh, defense, though, always stellar. Tons of Georgia Bulldogs on that defense. There's Dudley with a nice move, though. Dudley Saxon also looking for him to take that next step. He got stripped of his star development uh, dev trait. Why? I have no idea. There's really, there was really no excuse for that, but he did unfortunately lose his uh, star dev. So got to try to hopefully get that back. Speaking of Dudley, we are going to test the outside with Dudley Saxton's. You know, I know I made the focus uh, throw it deep with JJ four, but that's okay. Dudley trying to get some speed, but cannot outrun Devin white. 
who is manning the middle on this Philly defense. That's going to bring up third down. I like screen pass to Dudley on this one. Got to make sure that we uh, don't get sacked here because pressure is coming. Dudley catches it, and you know when Dudley catches it in the open field, good things are going to happen because my man's got about 94 speed or something close to that, I want to say. So usually when Dudley gets it, I mean, he's, he's going to pick up at least four or five yards on the screen, I feel like. So that is... Very good to see on Dudley's behalf. Now, I am going to streak McLaurin here, depending on what that safety does. Can we please, man, bullet pass. That should have been a touch pass. I struggle with that so much in this game. What the fuck is this? Terry now getting double teamed on the outside. How about that? Let's see if we can pick up some good yardage on this one here. We're going to give it to George Williams. Huge target, but for some reason, the six foot nine man cannot push uh, Deion Jones and Rashad White out of the way there. And that's going to bring up a very big third and in inches here. I think that we're going to go draw play to Brian Robinson. Brian is still in some sets and he has a big hole up the middle and fighting forward. So curious to know how this uh, tandem, this duo of running backs is going to fare. Dudley Saxton, the lightning, Brian Robinson, the thunder. Both of them have a you know very different uh, skill set. And curious to know, does Brian Robinson stay on this team or does he end up getting shipped, shipped out? Difficult to say. And I pressed the wrong button. I did not mean to do that. I meant to press circle for Curtis Samuel and I pressed square for Terry McLaurin. And I don't know how that one wasn't picked off. Madden God smiled on me. Got to make sure I return the favor. We're going to go play action, boot rollout, and we're sacked. We're sacked there. Did not even see Quentin Booth. He was a rookie last season. I remember he gave us tons and tons of headaches and uh, did not even see him on that play because I was looking downfield the entire time. And now we're faced with a third and long. So can we pick this up? That is the question. One of these receivers has to get open. We got two of them out there. Somehow Slay, not going to call him by his first name. Somehow Slay was able to cover two receivers out there. And I mean, I know he's good, but don't think he's good enough to cover two receivers running in the open field. But whatever. Nonetheless, it is a punt on our opening possession and we give the ball back to Philly. We're going to go nickel blitz this time. Second and seven. Maybe somebody can get back there to Hertz. Not gonna. He's going to check it down to Eckler. Chase Young there to make up for his previous dumb play of illegal touching, holding Eckler to no gain on the play now what i'm gonna do here i think i'm gonna come out blitz but i'm gonna audible to man coverage sometimes i feel like that does work in madden it shouldn't even be a thing but i just feel like sometimes it does and that's a diving attempt there for devin duvernay but he drops it kendall fuller was in the vicinity would have been a very difficult pass to haul in and luckily for us he was not able to do so um, so Rigoberto Sanchez is going to come in and give the Sentinels a chance to take the lead or possibly tie it. Jahan Dotson on the punt return, not going to get anything. Starting this drive from the 34, going to come out I form with a little play fake action here. And Terry is open if we can get him, and we do. And Terry still has room to roam as well. That's what I like to see from the St. Louis Savior. He didn't do too much last week. Oh, that's right. He left the game. I forgot about that. He left the game. And then he had the audacity in the locker room to tell us we should have won that game. And it's like, yeah, we should have won that game, Terry. It would have been nice if you were out there to help us do that. So um, at any rate, let's see if Dudley can do anything on the outside here. Coming out of pistol, looking for some good blockers. We kind of have him there momentarily, but couldn't really hold up. And that should take us to the end of the first three nothing is your score so defensive minded football game which i like to see don't like being in shootouts with teams because it usually does not end well in my favor and you know what i'm thinking here ladies and gents i think it's a great time to pull out the single back x bunch nasty we're into eagles territory now want to strike and take the lead don't want to kick a field goal or give it back to them so let's hopefully hit Curtis Samuel here. We're usually able to. Should have no problem there as well. And Kurt is going to get shoved out of bounds at the six-yard line by Grant Delpit, the current Cleveland Brown. 
But that is why I love that play so much. I talk about it all the time. I mean, I probably sound like a broken record, but I always like to at least mention it for people who may be new to the channel. I don't typically call my own plays, but the PAX Bunch Nasty, I call once per game. So let's see if we can score this touchdown here on the rollout. Going to check it down to Dudley. Dudley has space. Dudley dives, and Dudley crosses the plane. Yes, Dudley Saxon, thank you so much, my man. Two-year pro now out of Florida. Typically a threat in the running game, not typically a threat in the passing game, unless I'm dialing up screens. But that time he was open in the flat. It was a no-brainer. Dudley dives and puts the Sentinels on top. Got a little wind here at the link, so got to be careful. Wind is blowing to the right. Joey Sly going to have no problem with that as he was the best kicker in the NFL last season. I know that's not like a real award or anything, but you know what? I take great pride in that. If anybody's been watching this, watching my YouTube channel since back when I started the Cupcake Relocation franchise, I was pretty cheeks when it came to kicks. And some for some reason here in Sentinels franchise, I've been the opposite of Cheeks. What's the opposite of Cheeks? I don't know. You can uh, fill in any noun that you would like to that would fit the bill there. So let's see if we can have a good defensive stand again. See what Hurts decides to do here. He is going to check it down to A.J. Brown there on the right side, making his second reception of the game. Show a little blitz on this one. It's not going to be a blitz, but, you know, just got to keep the Eagles on their toes here keep them guessing a little bit john allen was there trying to get pressure and that one's going to be dumped off to dallas goddard who is a superstar x factor and what's he get for his troubles he gets an injury he doesn't look very injured on that one as he was talking a lot of trash but now we see him on the bench favoring that right shoulder there so grant calcaterra back up behind him i would love love to see some grant calcaterra action because uh, Dallas Goddard is always, always tough to play against. Hurts coming out, sing, uh, shotgun here. See what he decides to do. Devonta Smith, or no, that's uh, Devin Duvernay, my apologies, making a diving baseball slide to put the Eagles into Sentinels territory. Here on third and two, we are actually going to send pressure. Don't know if it's the right call or the best decision, but I don't care. We're going to do it anyways, so hopefully it pays off and... It was good enough defense. Looks like a looked like a catchable ball, but Emmanuel Forbes was in there, and that should bring out Kaimi Fairbairn and the field goal unit again for Nick Sirianni. So if, and gotta watch the fake. Teams have been running fakes on me a lot lately for some reason. Don't know why. But so far holding the Eagles to two field goals, I will take that as a big W because the Eagles can put up points and they can put up points fast. Right now, our defense is playing Ben, but don't break. New drive here for the Sense, and J.J. Ford has his Dots X Factor activated, which is always lovely. McLaurin wide open. Nobody guarded him on the drag, and McLaurin has tons, tons of room to roam. So Terry, huge focal point of this game so far for us, and I love it. He, he should be. Coming out single back here on second and eight. Terry's going to be in single coverage but I don't necessarily trust it. But I do trust Bart Burns, who is there, the two-year pro now out of Texas A&M. Your reigning rookie of the year. Well-deserved, I would say, too. I mean, you could make an argument for J.J. Ford, but if we're looking at it in terms of uh, how they look at it in real life, too many picks, too many picks. I mean, you can't win offensive rookie of the year with, uh, what did Ford have, 21 picks last season? I mean, you just can't do it. I'm going to audible this into, Bro. don't move back, Logan Thomas. I want you on that side. I want you on that side. Not going to be able to probably get this playoff in time, but still a pretty good hole for Dudley. Not exactly what I wanted to happen, but I'll take a gain of five. Second and five, balls on the 10. We're going to go play fake again. And, oh, I do have somebody open. It's Logan Thomas in the corner. feel like I had multiple options on that one. I was looking at Dudley in the fl in the flat. I was looking at Logan Thomas and also was looking at Scary Terry. But I saw Logan Thomas get a, just a little bit of separation there at the end. J.J. Ford has his dots X Factor activated, so he ain't going to miss a pass like that. He is a dude. And how about that? Sentinel's playing pretty darn good to start this one off here. Again, got to watch that win to the right side, but not going to matter for the previous best kicker in the nfl dime blitz might be a good idea i know it's a little hyper aggressive here but sometimes you know high risk 
high reward. We'll see if it pays off. And all. So see if somebody can get to Jalen Hurts, and it's Jamin Davis. Yes, Jamin Davis. We need him to take a big step up to the five-year pro now out of Kentucky. He's retained his star development throughout the course of this one and uh, need him to be a big focal point of our offense. We're guessing pass. We're shading inside, and we got Justin, Her or Justin Herbert. Je oh, there we go, Kendall Fuller. Yes, he is the man. He is our defensive GOAT. Bah. Oh, my God. Picks in back-to-back -back games for Kendall Fuller, the superstar development corner. And, I mean, that one was just – I mean, that was a good – I think it was a good pass from Hertz. Thought he was going to A.J. Brown at first, but maybe he floated it over the head of Fuller. Not 100% sure, but either way, Fuller jumped the route. And, I mean, come on now. That's exactly – what you want to see from your CB number one, right? Um, I'm going to audible this one. I had an outside, outside zone run to Dudley, but I see a little crease in the line there. But we got Jordan Davis, who's just a great player, shedding blocks instantly. You know I love me some TE attack. Should be the final play before the two-minute warning. We're going to roll out with Ford. And actually, Ford's got a little bit of space to run. I don't I don't usually do that with Ford because he is definitely not the uh, scrambling quarterback type, but they were given they were giving it to me. They were giving me the hole. And, you know, sometimes when you see a hole, you just have to go for the hole. That's exact. J.J. Ford has no problem finding the hole. Let me tell you what. He has no problem finding the hole. And third and three here. I think that uh, draw play to Robinson sounds like a good idea. Can it work? It will work. Brian Robinson making the most out of his sets. That's now two plays that were, I think, third down conversions, and they were both draw plays. And you know what? My great-great-grandpappy always told me, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So how about draw play to Dudley? And I never knew my great-great-grandpappy, but that is definitely something he would have said. I mean, gain of five, you know, you'll you'll always go for a gain of five, always settle for that. If you pick up five yards on every down, you win the game. So there you go. Speaking of Dudley, let's keep him on the field and let's go screen pass to my man. Got a lot of blockers out there, but I kind of went the wrong way. Not the worst result as it's going to kill a little bit more clock and pick up a first down. I mean, coach is saying screen pass again. I don't disagree with it. I love me some screens. Got all three timeouts, so not worried about calling one here. Got tons of time and really just still want to take some more time off the clock. Dudley going to get a second receiving touchdown of the game. Okay, so not going great for my man in the rushing department, but he now has his second, second receiving touchdown of the game. And that is why Dudley, who is a fan favorite, I see, I see the comments. I know, I know that you guys are some Dudley fans, and that's why he has earned the starting nod over Brian Robinson. Let's not allow a field goal before halftime. I would be uh, actually a huge fan of that, and it's looking like that's what's going to happen, though, because they're already within uh, just a couple pubes of Kaimi Fairbairn's field goal range. This happens all the time. I mean, I feel like it's a Madden thing. Like, teams just turn on the freaking Jets. When it comes time for like a two minute drill or they got just a little bit of time before they got to get into field goal range. Although that one not going to help their cause too much. But um, I feel like that does happen a lot. Like teams just go super saying on you when when they're in the clutch like that. And uh, that's a nice catch from Devonta Smith. I think his first of the game. And it's looking like they are unless they don't call a timeout here, which they do. Nick Sirianni and the boys are going to get into field goal range. Bear Bears should make this. He's a two for two so far in this game. Perfect. Shouldn't have any trouble with this one either. And he will not. So there you go. That is going to be the score going into the locker room. 21 to nine. But remember, we do get the ball first chance to kind of open this thing up. And I'm just praying and hoping that the Sentinels can do that. Okay. So we're playing good, especially in the passing department. I mean, rushing, not 
too bad either, but I feel like most of those yards are probably Brian Robinson and also that scramble from J.J. Ford. But the two passing touchdowns to Dudley, one on the screen and then one on the little uh, play action out of the flat there. Giants also are NFC East rivals torching the Minnesota Vikings, so I guess we have to make sure to keep pace with our NFC East foes. And uh, I... Not going to change. We're going to continue throw it deep. Receivers routes were pretty good. And as far as the Eagles game plan, I mean, uh, defend medium pass probably is where Hertz did the most damage. So we'll see how that goes. Winning play of the third quarter. You know, the draw play to Robinson has been working. And what the heck could that flag be? It's got to be defensive, right? I mean, if they let me get the playoff. Okay. Offsides. I like to see it. Jordan Davis. Thank you, brother. I will take the five free yards. Nice little possible hole here for Dudley Saxton. Let's see if Dudley is able to find the hole. Don't know what he was like in college, in his college days. But apparently he is very good at finding the hole as he moves the chains. Hassan Reddick with the tackle. And people are out there just playing air guitars. Terry and Ford both have their X factors activated. So let's see if we can hit Mr. McLaurin. It's great defense there. I mean, I kind of had tunnel vision. Probably shouldn't have thrown that ball because uh, I think I probably had other options there. But I did throw the ball. So what are you going to do? You're going to live to fight another down, as they say. I am going to send Bart Burns streaking and see what can possibly materialize on this play. Curtis is wide open, and man, oh man, the coverage there. Deion Jones, the middle linebacker. What do we do here? That is the question. What do we do here? Maybe, let's see what Terry is working with over there on the left side. Gotta make sure I go through all my proper progressions on this one. Let's just give it to George Williams, who fights forward and gets very close. And I don't see a world where we could punt this ball back to him. I really don't. I don't see a world that we could punt this ball back to Philly in this one. I feel like we have to go for it. And I'm thinking something maybe inside zone to Dudley might work or possibly Brian Robinson. I got to make sure I uh, don't waste too much time here. Not really finding anything that I necessarily like. So I don't know if this is the best call, but it's what I'm going with. I'm sticking with it. Dudley, find the hole. Well, you showed us that you were so good at that. Last time, no. Oh, Devin White sneaks in there. Unblocked virtually. I, I wouldn't do it over if I had a chance. I wouldn't do it over. I would do it the exact same way. I feel like <clears throat> seven times out of ten, maybe nine times out of ten, Dudley is going to get that, but... That time, he just came up short, unfortunately, and quick little RPO to A.J. Brown, but it's broken up by Emmanuel Forbes. Hurts coming out, trips bunch. Look at all those X-Factors and superstars back there. That is uh, highly concerning. Indeed, somebody crashed on Hurts, and somebody got back there. Chance Rice, who was the Eagles' number one draft pick out of Auburn, pick 26 in the draft. The right guard goes down, and I did not even see... Uh, which one of our Sentinels got that sack? But you know what? It doesn't even matter because we got the sack. And that's what matters. Big defensive stand again. We've been getting them in this game, guys. We have been getting good defensive stands. Need another one here. Where's Hurts going to go? He's rolling out. Somebody get him. Oh, my God. That was way closer than it should have been. And uh, that's probably going to bring out Kaimi Fairbairn for his fourth field goal attempt. This one's going to be from about the 50. So he's drilled every single field goal so far. Will he drill this one? He remains perfect. So Kaimi Fairbairn, uh, Philly's MVP so far in this game, as he has all 12 of their points. I think we definitely need to entertain the idea of getting better on the offensive line. I know I mentioned pregame that probably our biggest focus would be a defensive end. And I think that should be a focus but our offensive line hasn't been great to start so let's see if we can do possibly something positive on this play just gonna check it down to samuel who gets very close but he is stuffed there by slay and a big third and two coming up we'll go screen pass again here on third and two it has been working 
so far in this one. So let's see if it can keep working. Oh, Dudley has so much space. That time it was good blocking. JJ Ford getting very close to 200 yards and does have those three touchdowns. Dudley also 37 yards through the air. So he's not getting it done on the ground, but at least he is making up for it uh, through the air, which is always great to see. So let's see if we can possibly get Mr. Saxton involved, although... Oh, Terry, Terry, Terry. I want to do it so bad, but I'm not gonna. Dudley, can you shake somebody? You cannot shake Devin White. Dudley only averaging 2.4 yards on the ground. Second and nine, five and a half to go until the fourth. Really want to answer with some points here. How about Bart Burns? Oh my God, he caught it. Yes, thank you. And that, sh it was a bullet pass and I tried to make it a touch pass. I have to be the worst possible person with throwing touch passes and I just don't understand it like I know heat of the moment probably like your reflexes just you know has you mash the the x button or whatever but I just I feel like I don't know I kind of feel like I do tap it ever so slightly but it just rarely ever is a touch pass when I need it to be so I don't know regardless it still worked we're coming out TE attack coach did Suggest it, and we'll see what we can make happen. It's Bart again. Bart should be able to get in. You fight forward. Yes. Bart going Super Saiyan on this drive. Back-to-back -back huge pickups. And that is why he is your reigning defensive rookie of the year. Also, we are going to go for two on this one here. And uh, maybe one of these slants or something can possibly get open on the field let's see if that is what happens McLaurin back of the end zone we got it what will Sirianni and his boys draw up it's first and 10 Hertz is coming out of the pistol and there is Eckler he hasn't been a factor up until this point would really like him to continue not being a factor as that is easily his by far his best run of the game and that was a good play call that Sirianni drew up there and uh, Eckler was able to find the edge wish Dudley could find the edge like that in this game so far he hasn't been able to and Jonathan Allen I'm kind of less than impressed on what he's been able to do we did give him the El Toro superstar ability which is supposed to help him win on the bull rushes and I gotta be honest so far I ain't seeing it I mean there was a couple times I can recall where he got close to the quarterback but uh I know John Allen is more of a run stopper. That's kind of his shtick, but would really like to see him get involved in the passing game. And I would really like to see somebody tackle Eckler because right now it's looking like nobody can. Okay, Hurts coming out shocking again as he tends to do. That's wide open. How the heck did A.J. Brown get so wide open? I got to see that because he didn't have anybody within basically 10 yards of him. I mean... See who had the coverage on him. That is uh, Emmanuel Forbes. Okay. So AJ Brown, what's what's Emmanuel Forbes do? I mean, he's just not, he's just, okay. Well, there's there's two receivers. Uh, Forbes was in zone coverage, I presume. Devonta Smith was there. I mean, that's a tough, tough situation to put a corner in. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. I mean, he would have had Devonta Smith or AJ Brown. Chose AJ Brown and Forbes just kind of, Got caught in no man's land, so that one is tough. Definitely a tough pill to swallow. First pass, first touchdown of the game for Philly. Prior to that, it's been four Kaimi Fairbairn field goals, and that is going to make it now a 10-point game. So right now, in addition to obviously scoring, just want to kind of start thinking about killing some clock. You know, only got a quarter to go. It's a two-score game. Need a block there. Kurt, uh, Jahan Dotson or Curtis Samuel sets a pretty nice one. And Dudley, that may have been his best run of the game. Not sure. Ball very close to midfield. Let's see what Dudley can do. Nice uh, nice block set there by our fullback, Michael Burton. Yeah, finally decided to pick up a fullback because I have had not been playing one for a extremely long time. I had a tight end. Tight end John Bates converted tight end to fullback, was playing in the backfield there. So now we actually got a fullback. This will be the last play of the game. It's going to be the Saxon. Saxon has no blockers, and he is just absolutely suplexed there by Nolan Smith, the Georgia Bulldog. That will bring us to the fourth quarter. Green passes have been working beautifully in this game, so we're going to try it again. Hopefully, Dudley can get some nice blocks. He's going to cut a field and just barely get it. 
Dudley has been a weapon in the passing game today and kind of starting to put it together on the ground as well. And uh, I'll tell you what, this is Dudley freaking city right now. Going to be as long as they will allow me to with nine minutes to go in the ball game up by 10. Yeah, we're going to give it to Dudley as much as freaking humanly possible here. So hopefully we can get the outside on this one here and uh, pick up some good positive yardage. We'll see what Dudley is able to do. Dudley has a little bit of blocks, tries to juke a man. Pick up four. I'll take it. Brian on the draw has been pretty effective so far, and it looks like it's going to continue. So Brian trying to uh, earn as many possible reps as he can. And you know what? On third and inches, I am going to go. I'm at least going to come out. QB sneak here. Not saying, oh, and they're pinching the line too. That's that is does not bode well for us. Maybe we will uh, audible bullet to HB Sting. We got Robinson in the ball game again. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. And he's going to get shut down instantly. Wow. Okay. Jordan Davis gets us. And we're going to have to. Wow. Coach says go for it. In this situation, I mean, it is a two-score game. Right now, we're up by 10. I feel like we kicked the field goal. I really feel like we kicked the field goal in this situation. Um, it's a 48 yard or two. I mean, that way, if Philly scores, they'll have to score two touchdowns to jump us as opposed to just a uh, touchdown and a field goal. So I think kicking the field goal makes the most sense, right? Go by 13. That's what we're going to do. And hopefully it doesn't come back to bite me. Back the boys up a little bit. Just back the boys up a tiny, tiny little bit. The last thing I want is just to get beat, you know, deep on some crazy play. So got to also watch Dallas Goddard. He's usually Jalen Hurts' favorite target. And Hurts also has his X Factor activated now too. Goddard does haul it in for a gain of five. Guess and pass. We're shading inside here. And of course, oh, it's going to be a play fake actually. And wide open is Devonta Smith. But you know, that clock, good old father time is definitely not the Eagles friend. If the Eagles score here, which I would not be surprised if they do, if they were to somehow get the ball back and score again, that would uh, be ball game. We don't want that to happen. Don't want that to happen. Bad pass from Hertz out of bounds. Hertz is uh, semi struggling. In this one here, I'm going to come out nickel uh, blitz and I'm going to audible into our Tampa defense. We're going to guess pass and we're going to shade. We're not going to shade. We're just going to guess pass. Going to watch AJ Brown, though, for sure. But it's not going to be AJ Brown. It's going to be Dallas Goddard. And that is what the frick I'm talking about. It's what I'm talking about, man. Teams just turn it on in Madden when they need to. It seems like we're going to go man here as well. And uh, I guess have to use her somebody on or just kind of have eyes at least on Goddard. It's not going to matter because that's Eckler. But I'll tell you one thing. The Eagles are taking a lot of time off this clock, which I'm cool with. Zone defense here. We're guessing pass again. Obvious passing situation, you would think. I mean, I guess necessarily not. Could be a run to Eckler, but I don't foresee that happening. But it's just Grant Calcaterra up the middle. And that does... Uh, Get the old palms a little bit sweaty as again, they're, we're only up by 13. So we at least, at least have to come away with a field goal on this one. Um, because if we give the ball back to the Eagles and they score, they will go up. Got to still play a little aggressive. Can't just hand the ball to Dudley a bunch of times. That is not going to work. Terry is pretty open and God almighty, man. That one was almost picked off there by Devin White. Devin White is freaking everywhere in this game. He is literally everywhere on the field. He's, he's played great. Absolutely great. So come on now, Dudley. I need you to block for me, please. And let's just pick this up. Pick up something positive. George Williams underneath has been a weapon today. George Williams underneath has been an absolute weapon. Got to pick this up and... I form to Dudley. Just trust that he can get it, I guess, right? Um, this may, this may, as much as I hate to say it, maybe go for it territory. Let's see what happens. 
Can I get a freaking block when I need it? Please. Could possibly be the dumbest call of my entire life, but I'm going screen pass. Screens have worked in this game. I feel like if I punt it back to the Eagles, they're going to score. So let's just hopefully pick this up. Pressure is there instantly. Dudley breaks the tackle. Somehow uh, defies all odds. He was stopped in the backfield. Oh, my God. D that Dudley was I was ready to throw my controller. Dudley was stopped in the backfield. But I'm telling you, this man is a weapon. OK, the reason why I threw it so, so quick, so fast is the pressure was there. I don't know what, uh, who's that, Will Devlin. I don't know what he was doing. And Ricky Stromberg is just standing there like an idiot. <laughs> so, you know, you see pressure was right there. I mean, I, I had to get that thing off. So I'm like, all right, whatever. Check it down to Dudley. Dudley should have been stopped right there. But defying all odds, being the Saxonator that he is, he just, he's a memory card. Because he just saved our game. This isn't just a running it situation. We got to be a little bit of aggressive, a little bit aggressive, and at least get into field goal range at bare minimum. Because I feel like if we punt the ball back to Philly, I just feel like they're going to score. So let's not allow that to happen. Please, Bart Burns is open. So open in the middle of the field. Just going to slide. Not going to risk a fumble. Bart Burns has played great. Got to check his stats. At the end of the game, 106 yards. Don't even have to. And uh, that's going to take us to the two-minute warning. And we are in the driver's seat. Big players make plays, though. You know, sometimes, you know, the old saying, oh, Dudley, yeah, just give it to him. Why not? I was just about to say, sometimes, the old saying, sometimes it's about the X's and the O's, but sometimes it's about the Jimmy's and the Joe. We don't have anybody on the team named Jimmy or Joe, but we have somebody on the team named Dudley. That's his third touchdown of the game. And barring some crazy miracle for Philly, this is our game to lose. Not going to get the two-point conversion, but that's okay. We're still going to be up by 12 with less than two minutes to go. Come on, hold them under 30. All I want for Christmas is to hold the Eagles to under 30 and then we are going to because Quan Martin is going to pick it off and I don't even want to score the touchdown should I should I nope or I guess I tried to slide but it didn't work so uh okay well helping out my man Quan Martin his stats that was I think looked like a good pass let's take a look at it here on replay so Hertz is looking for Smith again he was wide open there but didn't see him so he rolled out, scrambled to his left, went this way to Dallas Goddard. And I mean, that really wasn't a good read as Quan Martin was right there. I did try to slide at the end because I don't I want don't want Philly to get any more yards, but I must not have uh, double tapped the button. But that's all right, because Quan Martin is a good dude. And he deserves that pick six. That is going to be ball game. Jamin Davis gets a nice sack on Hurts to end it. And that was a great, great win for the Sentinels. Like I said, man, I don't understand it. I mean, you've seen last week the Chargers pretty much did whatever they wanted. Eagles are a better team than the Chargers. Better overall, better players, more weapons. But for some reason, I think we've only lost to the Eagles one time, I want to say. For some reason, we just always play them tough. We get the 45 to 26 victory. How about JJ Ford talking about bounce back games? Oh man, 331 yards, four touchdowns, no picks, 70% completion. Jalen Hurts did kind of start to put it together, but those two picks ultimately is what did him in. Now Dudley did finish with 57 yards on the ground and one touchdown. Austin Eckler never got it going. And how about Brian Robinson averaging 5.2 yards per carry? That's nice. But this is where Dudley really shined. 63 yards receiving, two touchdowns. So Dudley does get over 100 yards total, which is good to see. Logan Thomas had that one touchdown. Bart Burns played out of his mind. Four catches for 106 yards. And McLaurin did have two for 61. Didn't really get him involved as much as I would have liked to, but it's okay. Jamin Davis with two and a half sacks. That's awesome. 
and then Quan Martin and Kendall Fuller, each with one INT. That was the bounce back game of all bounce back games, and it's a divisional game as well, so you always like to rack up those divisional wins. You never know when tiebreakers might happen when it comes playoff time, and if the NFC East is anything like it was last year, I mean, last year, everybody was pretty much within one game of one another. So it's always good to snag those division games. So Eagles starting out 0-2. Very interesting. I know the Giants are going to get a dub today. Not sure about the Cowboys. But the only thing I care about, Sentinels now 1-1 one one on the season. Next week, taking on a little bit of the NFC North. Got the Chicago Bears and the Detroit Lions coming up. So... Taking on Matt Eberflus and uh, MCDC, Motor City Dan. So uh, that should be very interesting. But for now, just going to relish in this victory, guys. And you know what? I hope that you guys are as well. So that is going to do it for me tonight. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.